Here are the details on Ike. The 11 o'clock advisory, 135 mile per hour winds moving west northwest at 17, 610 miles northeast of the Leeward Islands. Keep in mind that Ike is still very far out to sea. And again, when we look at the future track and intensity over the next four or five days, it's indicating that the storm is likely going to remain a major hurricane. Now, once we get out here to the day four and five area, yes, it barely touches South Florida. Here's the situation tonight. It's still a Category 4 storm. The winds are still 135 miles per hour, and the future track continues to bring it on a west, maybe even west-southwest move between Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. After that, as I've been telling all of you guys out there, that that's where it gets a little questionable Monday into Tuesday. The cone of uncertainty does grow in this time period, and so really the storm could be anywhere here. It could be to the north of us, to the south. It might even be past us to the west, although that seems like the least likely outcome at this point in time. The storm is moving west-southwest at 16, so at a pretty fast rate. It's still a Category 3 with 115 mile-per-hour winds. The future track for the next 72 hours continues almost a due west movement, maybe slightly due south of west. Then once we get into Monday, a slight north of west movement is going to begin, and that's when it's going to get tricky for us. At what point does that begin, and how much of a northwest movement is there? But tonight, as you can see, all of the keys, the straits in South Florida continue to be in the cone. Once we get past Tuesday and into Wednesday, a greater risk area now spreading all the way to the central Gulf of Mexico, and of all things, just off of the mouth of the Mississippi River in southeast Louisiana. This is about to barrel through the Turks and Caicos Islands. And as you can see, the eye is becoming more and more pristine with time. Also, the convection is extremely deep. And so this is getting closer to a Category 5 storm. It's not a Category 5 right now, but it is a solid Category 4 storm. Moving to the west-southwest now at 15 miles an hour, 947 is the pressure, and it's right near Grand Turk. Unfortunately for the folks in Haiti and the Dominican Republic and Cuba, looks like a lot of heavy rain, and Cuba could see a direct hit from this. You can see that this is the cone over the next three days or so, forecast to be a possible Category 4 just to the north of Cuba, making landfall during the day tomorrow. And then right over the island, notice it actually almost emerges into the northern part of the Caribbean. Obviously, if it moves over the island, it's going to weaken substantially. Then it should emerge into the Gulf of Mexico, and notice its closest approach to us is on Tuesday. It could still be a direct hit on Key West. It's now, instead of a weak Category 4, a strong Category 3 hurricane. So still a major hurricane and a force to be reckoned with, especially here around the eastern portions of Cuba, as we anticipate seeing a landfall tonight here on the east side of Cuba, and then perhaps staying over Cuba for the next 24 to 30 hours, dumping torrential rainfall. And of course, with those very strong winds, we're going to see power outages, trees down, and no doubt a lot of damage to buildings. If it stays north of Cuba, well, we could have a much, much stronger storm, and the Keys will be dealing with a major hurricane. But even if it does weaken somewhat to a Category 1, it's expected to strengthen again as it moves into the Gulf of Mexico, perhaps up to major strength again. Now, the future track, well, I tell you, the, the, the model is really in good agreement, moving just south of Cuba, slicing across the western half of Cuba, and then moving into the Gulf of Mexico. Now, initially, there should be a motion to the northwest, but another building ridge north of Ike will likely turn Ike to the west, so landfall is possible, I think, anywhere along the Texas coast by the weekend from Galveston, maybe as far south as Brownsville, depending on the strength of that ridge. And the computer models all show a trip generally to the west and west-northwest. Here's the new advisory. Category 1, 1, 1, 1 could be a tropical storm along this route over Cuba. And then intensification to a Category 3. Landfall for now is pegged to be along the central uh, Texas coast. If anything, this line may have to be pushed south depending on the strength of that ridge. So initially, we were thinking maybe Louisiana. And now the trend again is pushing to our south. which is now back out over the Gulf of Mexico and an eye clearly forming here, as you can see in the color-enhanced satellite picture. The forecast track, along with the computer models, continue to take it out into the Gulf of Mexico and then turn it off into the northwest on Friday and Saturday. 
Ike is still a Category 2. However, some strengthening is likely as we work our way through tonight, heading into Friday. So strengthening before landfall. Gusts are up to 121 miles per hour. It is still moving west-northwest at 10 miles per hour. It's been making a little bit more of a northerly jog, though, since yesterday. So that makes the landfall a little farther up to the north. Ike is going to again be about 400 miles off the coast of Galveston right now. Some pretty impressive rain bands already moving inland at Louisiana and Mississippi today. It's forecast track still moving them towards Houston and Galveston by Saturday morning. These are the current stats. Near 100 miles per hour sustained wind will gust over 120. I'm with uh, meteorologist Rob Marciano. We've both been here all day in Galveston. The conditions have gotten very treacherous here. We're right along the Gulf of Mexico. This is the boulevard where people drive up and down along the beach. Every night it's usually very crowded. But right now the 17-foot seawall here on Seawall Boulevard, you can see the water is going over the top of it and it's very treacherous. We can't stay out here much longer, but I can tell you right now, Rob, this is really something just being out here. The rain's been coming out the last couple of hours. So many people stuck around. They just they wanted to see the surf come in. They wanted to see what Ike was going to give them. Well, I hope a lot of those folks are long gone, but we know that's not the case because at least a couple of thousand people have decided to stick it out. Mike, I wish I could deliver this weather faster to you. We're going to be in it the next couple of hours. It's headed in your direction, and I know it'll be a nice break for you getting wind gusts to 101 on your own handheld anemometer. Impressive. Yeah, and I think the winds right now, where we are, are even higher than that. So, so this is this is starting to be taken very, very seriously. Now we're getting some some new wind reports there, Steph, out of Hobby at 78 miles an hour. So uh, we've definitely got uh, hurricane winds here in the Houston, Texas area, and certainly what it's going to do is going to knock out power. It's potentially going to knock out power to millions of people. So uh, Center Point and Entergy, they are going to have a heck of a job on their hands here uh, once this system clears and they're going to try to get millions of people back online again uh, that's for sure we're thinking now that maybe within a half hour or so we're going to see the eye right here in clear lake which is in southeast houston well you know i haven't seen a lot of debris recently but it was a couple of hours ago that hold on All right, <laughs> sorry about that. Wow, that was a heck of a gust. Well, right now it's a little wild. One of those wild squalls that we've been talking about continuously through the night. We're getting some pretty powerful wind gusts. I heard Mike Bettis say we got a wind gust here in Beaumont in the lower 80s. I completely believe that because it keeps going on and off where the wind really comes in, gives you huge gusts of, uh, of wind, and then it starts to rain like it is right now. And it is literally raining in buckets. Anywhere you are. All right, even in here, okay, all right, even in here in this concrete building, stuff like this coming in can do some damage. What a huge difference. 40 minutes ago, we had 100 mile per hour sustained wind, and now the eye of Hurricane Ike is right over Galveston. It is completely calm. It is not raining. I could sit down here and have a picnic on this lawn, and it would be a very pleasant evening. It looks like now the eye has passed beyond where Amy is. Now right. they're feeling, feeling the back side of the storm. They're getting the back side or the southwest side of the eye wall. The wind has changed direction somewhat there. But again, once this thing gets over land, it will begin to dissipate rapidly. But it was quite an intense storm, a Category 2 hurricane at that. And Bill, as you know, Hurricane Ike made its official landfall right at Galveston, Texas at 2.10 this morning Central Time while most of us were asleep. I know our Weather Channel crews probably were not asleep at that time because I tell you what, we've had a lot of wind, a lot of rain with this one. And even though it has moved inland, it is still a Category 2 hurricane on the Saffir Simpson scale. Jackie, what is this storm doing? Is it still a strong Category 2? Are we downgrading yet? Are we down hitting to a 1. To, down to a 1. All right. Yeah, so it's good to see it coming down a little bit, but we're still looking at 90 mile per hour maximum sustained wind. So, you know, that's a lot of force still, and winds will continue to be an issue in the Houston area, you know, probably till at least early afternoon, if not uh, beyond that.